All right, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite little carry pieces I picked up recently. And uh, I was kind of inspired to do this from uh, another gun, which I may or may not have mentioned. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about is the Smith & Wesson 637. Now this is the uh, performance model though. So it's a little bit nicer and it comes with a, a different style of grip and things like that. Now, don't mind the, uh, the carbon and stuff on there. I did just shoot this yesterday and haven't cleaned it yet, but, uh, yeah, um, Smith & Wesson J-Frame, you know, very common. Uh, it's been around quite a while. Uh, this is a ultra modern version, so it's got like the aluminum frame uh, and all of that. So, but it is the Performance Center model, so it has upgraded trigger uh, job and I think a little bit more of a, like a, a nicer finish, I think, subjectively speaking. Um, still, unfortunately, though, has the Hillary hole, as everyone likes to call it. I don't really have a personal issue with these things. Um, I've never run into any problems with them in any uh, Smith guns that I've seen uh, that have these. Um, so to me, it's kind of a, I kind of wish I didn't have it because it looks kind of gaudy just having that hole right there. I'd rather it not be there, but it's not a deal breaker either. Um, so yeah, your standard 38 special J frame. So you got your uh, five shots there in the cylinder. I have replaced the grips on these, of course. Uh, these are uh, Packmeyer compact grippers. Uh, awesome. I love these things. Uh, these are definitely a whole lot better than the ones they come with, which are these. Now these are a, uh, I think they were made by Alt Altamont, Altamont, however you pronounce that. Uh, you know, little wood panel grips. They're they're honestly pretty pretty darn small. You kind of see the profile there. Uh, they're very small. They don't absorb any recoil at all whatsoever. I feel like the grip it was just a little too small for my hand, so I replaced those pretty much immediately. Now, um, I mentioned that this buying this gun and carrying and everything was inspired by my experience with the Smith & Wesson Model 36, which I have right here. So, uh, yet again, you know, another classic snub nose, and I think this one looks a lot better, personally, but um, I just like carrying this one so much because it just didn't weigh anything. It was very, very comfortable to carry, even, even with this big, also, Packmeyer grip here. Um, it's just really, really comfy to carry. Uh, comfy to shoot, comfy to grip, comfy for everything. I mean, this thing is just a really, really nice carry piece. So I, I would have kept carrying this, except, you know, they don't really make Model 36s like this anymore. So uh, I was like, okay, well, what's a what's a modern equivalent uh, J-frame out there that can that can do the, the job just as well? More, uh, more practical, uh, something I wouldn't uh, be so torn up about if I had to use it in a self-defense situation and of course the police are going to take it for evidence gun and I may never see it again right so that's where this came in um, I also bought this during one of their uh, Smith & Wesson like kind of like rebate deal type thing so I got about like 50 bucks off uh, from the price for this so I paid all, all said and done I think around $490 for this model here so um, not bad I mean it's, it's about in line with um, other carry pieces out there revolvers or not so, uh, but yeah, I, I find this, these, these little J-frames infinitely more comfy to carry than like my SIG 365 XL, for instance, even though it has more than twice the capacity um, and arguably a more powerful round, there's just something very comfortable about carrying this. And also because it doesn't weigh hardly anything, because like I said, this is all steel. This is aluminum frame with a steel barrel. So quite a difference in terms of weight and uh, recoil as well. So shooting this, um, absolutely is not as comfortable <laughs> as, as shooting an all steel gun. Uh, it's just it's just different and um, not in a good way either. Uh, recoil on this is substantial. Uh, even with your regular like non plus P loads, regular 130 grains, 158 grain uh, FMJ target loads, it's still a little punishing out of this. Especially because I practice mostly uh, double action only with this gun and the, uh, the, the trigger is, is excellent. I mean it is almost on par with this one. It's still not quite the same. It's a little bit different. I, I just think the internals are just slightly different, but um, the trigger pulls definitely are different. And uh, I would say the double action is a little bit smoother and cleaner on this one than the Model 36, but the single action to me is just better on the 36 for some reason. It just feels more solid. On this uh, 637, it, it feels a little too light in some, some instances. It's, it's almost just, they, they tuned it maybe a little too much, but yeah, I barely put any, any pressure on that whatsoever. So it is very light, it's very crisp, yes, but it's almost to the point where, I don't know, there's something about it that just doesn't quite um, 
jive with me. Additionally, um, I, I don't know what it is about having an all black like kind of front sight like that, for, but for me, shooting shooting the 36 was quite easy. Uh, sight, sight picture was pretty good, but for some reason, this you now you can see I have painted mine uh, with some bright fluorescent orange here. When I was shooting this, even during the day and especially at night, it was very very bad. Uh, the gray here of the front sight just kind of blended in with the rear sight trench here, and it made it very difficult to kind of. Uh, accurately pick out where exactly my front sight was and uh, it, it wasn't a great experience so I was like mm, I, I don't even like that so I took some enamel uh, like model paint and put a white base coat on and then put the fluorescent paint on top of that and it's held up very very well no chipping nothing's come off or anything like that and that definitely presents a much better uh, sight picture for me so gray on gray tends to wash out uh, in pretty much every environment that I've, I've tried it in. Um, but of course this orange shows up a lot better. Uh, I do wish though that they had kind of done what like, like Ruger did for their LCRs where it has a removable uh, like little front sight here that you can, you can fiddle with. And I think Taurus does that too on their most recent models of 856. Uh, you can act absolutely replace that with like a, a night sight or something. That would be cool to see on uh, on pretty much all of their J frames, if they just upgraded them to to do that, that would be nice. Um, so for, yeah, for shooting experience, this thing is very snappy and it will take a toll on your hand. Um, a couple days ago, I had some blisters on my thumbs from working in the backyard, and uh, they healed over for the most part. But when I went to go shoot this on double action, um, just just the recoil, even even with these these rubber grips here, just the recoil from that was enough to tear the skin open on my uh, my blisters again, and uh, I was like, "Ow, that kind of hurts a little bit." But uh, you know, still able to finish my shooting session just fine. Um, you know, shoots just just fine. So, uh, and of course, if you're in a self defense situation, I think the last thing you're probably going to be thinking of is shooting comfort. So. This gun absolutely will not move in my hand though, uh, with, with these grips and, and, and how I shoot with double action, there's no way, like this is my shooting grip, right? There's no way this is moving out of my hand. It's, it's, it's positive, it's stuck in there. So I'm not worried about that. On the 36 though, with the, with the wooden grips like this, it, it tends to rock back just a little bit, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, as far as accuracy goes, so I already uh, mentioned my accuracy with the Model 36 and it's actually pretty darn impressive for, for what it is, you know? I think the best group I got was like two and a quarter inch at 25 yards. So that was pretty impressive, honestly. Uh, and these new modern J frames have the same level of accuracy. So I was able to get, you know, two and a half inch, three inch groups with this. Uh, at, at that point, honestly, it's really more about shooter skill than it is the mechanical accuracy of these guns. These things are um, absolutely accurate, uh, every much as bit as the, the older models. So um, no problems there. Uh, now, do I really practice at 25 too much with, with, with this one? Not really, because uh, I like to put like a body size target uh, up there about 10 to 15 yards, because that, that's about the limit of what I can do with uh, a good, quick uh, double action pull with this. Like I'm not taking my time there and sitting there in double action and really, really kind of dialing in my shot, you know, to get a, a nice um, target shooting experience with this. That's not what I'm doing. Uh, for me, it's, it's always very quick. Usually one-handed double action pulls just as fast as I think that I can keep the shots on my intended target. So, of course, five shots goes pretty quick, so that gets into the reloading aspect of it. Um, the cylinder latch on here is typical. Um, it's not, not great, it's not bad. Uh, it works, so. But, as uh, snub-nosed revolver uh, shooters would know, uh, depending on the style of grips that you have, your speed loaders may or may not work correctly, and I found that out the hard way. Uh, I didn't quite really listen to other folks that were telling me like, oh yeah, your, your grips can get in the way, because I never really experienced that when I was shooting like uh, my Taurus 856, the Colt Detective Special. Uh, this Model 36 never occurred to me, um, never had an issue with it. But this one, definitely with these uh, Packmeyer grips here, um, the rubber tends to catch on things, and it's definitely the case here with these HKS uh, speed loaders. And I'll try to demonstrate that here. So, so I got the speed loader in here, right? And it looks all fine and dandy, but when I try to uh, unlock it and then pull it out, it is getting stuck basically right there in that scallop. I cannot 
Like it, it's not going to come out. Like you can see right there, it's not even coming out. So that's a, a bit of a problem I had trying to work. Uh, it, it, you can absolutely still use that, but it's not um, not as fast as the thinner grips. Like on my 36, when I use this HKS speed loaders, they just drop right in, boom, done, easy, uh, no problems there. So with these grips, uh, they definitely get in the way of at least this style of speed loader. So I resorted to um, carrying like those uh, those rubber strips, and they carry five rounds each of so the the stripper strips, if you will, right? I get two two at a time in there, flick it off, turn the cylinder, put two at a time, flick it off, put the last one, flick it off, close it, and you're good to go. So um, reloading is definitely an art form when it comes to little snubbies like this if you're trying to be super fast and get back in the action, because five shots will go incredibly fast in a self-defense situation, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, uh, I'm not a fan of, uh, doing a New York reload where, you know, maybe I'll just carry this one too. So I have two of them. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I could do that, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm not really a, not really a fan of that. So reloading can be a bit of a chore with these and as well as getting the empties out when I'm at the range trying to knock these things out. Uh, typically I'll take my thumb up like this and my shooting grip and kind of push back like that. I know it's not, not a good angle, but I'll push like that as, you know, with a little bit of oomph in there to get those casings out. And what happens usually is I'll get one round, if I can see the shade here, one round that gets stuck about right there. And I kind of have to shake the whole gun and uh, rotate the cylinder and hit it again to get that last round out. So that's another dang against uh, these grips. But um, considering the shooting comfort that uh, and uh, I guess niceness of the grip that I get with these, I think it's a uh, worthwhile trade-off. Because when I did try the uh, the 637 with these Packmire wood grips, I had none of those issues with reloading or getting the rounds out. They all just came out just fine. And of course, with these ones too, the Altamont grips, uh, there's no issues getting the rounds out in, at all. Getting the rounds in, out, everything was good to go. So, yeah. Um, Choice of grips is, is pretty important and a very personal decision for a lot of people, just like their choice of carry gun. Uh, I know a, a few of my friends around around my, my age range, of course, would, would criticize me for carrying such an outdated, antiquated, little dinky little thing like this, you know, because they're all, they're all carrying their Glock 19s, their 365s, their LCP2s and all that, you know, stuff, right? But I don't know. There's just something about the comfort of having a revolver like this because there's no, nothing here that is really sticking out, except, you know, maybe the hammer, but that's that's actually never been an issue for me, oddly enough, carrying any of these. Any of my stun nose revolvers, the hammer has never been an issue. It's never, like, dig, dug into my uh, my gut. It hasn't dug into any part of my body. It just it sits really nice. And having this nice curvature here like this, I think works a lot better than having a semi-auto or auto-loader pistol where the beaver tail sticks out quite a bit, and it's always poking me in, in my gut. It's not the most comfortable thing, so... Um, as uh, nothing fancy would say, program compliance is very important, right? So I think it's more important that you're carrying a gun at all rather than not carrying a gun because it's uh, uncomfortable or bulky or you have some other reason why you don't want to carry it. Um, so it's better to have some gun than no gun, I think. Now there are some situations, of course, that I will carry the other, other pistols that I have instead of my snub noses, but usually for like an EDC type thing or if I'm just going down to the, the store or something or out in the town or something like that, you know, I'll, I'll usually be carrying this or something similar to it. So, yeah, um, as far as the performance center model kind of upgrades, I guess, um, I do feel like they, they are actually worth the money, at least for this model. I think the finish on here is a little bit nicer and the trigger is, of course, much better than the, uh, the default uh, 637, 638s, 442s, all those modern J-frames, right, that have the aluminum frames and all of that, the... Uh, I think the performance center models actually are pretty nice and, and, and worth the money. So now do I think in terms of like build quality and longevity and stuff like that, does this one match up a modern J frame match up to the old style J frames? I don't think so. Honestly, uh, there's just something really nice about, uh, this old model 36 compared to the modern J frame here in modern 637. I, I don't know. There's, there's just something nice too about having like an all steel, all blued gun like this that just looks really nice with the wood grips on here 
you know, the trigger is, is, is so crisp on here, the action's so crisp. Everything about this gun just feels very, very nice, you know. On this one, you can definitely see where uh, the cost cutting measures have been taken. Even with the, the performance setter models, it's, it's just not quite the same. Um, and of course, it's aluminum frame, so some people will have some gripes about that. I have never really seen anything wrong with the aluminum frames, uh, as far as like, like strength and longevity and things like that. I haven't seen them crack, I haven't seen them break. Uh, I haven't really heard of stories like that. But then again, uh, your average customer for these kinds of guns is probably not putting 1,000, 2,000 rounds through these guns in their entire lifetime. So, well, the gun's lifetime, that is. So uh, these are not high volume guns. Um, and I'm saying that not because I don't think it could handle it, but just because people just aren't shooting them that much, which, which is fine. You know, you, you get your, your 50 rounds a month then for your self-defense practice, and I think that's, that's decent. But uh, yeah, some of the lines and, and the, the moldings and cuts and things are just a little bit different uh, on these modern J-frames uh, compared to the older ones. And I might make a video about that too and go over like more in-depth comparisons about what I feel about these modern ones versus the older ones. And maybe just compare like all of my snub noses together and, and be like, hey, you know, what's cool about them, right? So, yeah, overall, um, I do like this very much. Uh, like I said, for practical purpose uh, of, of everyday carry, uh, this fits perfectly. It's very comfortable to carry. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. It's not the most enjoyable to shoot, uh, but it wasn't really meant to be. And, uh, you know, very nice uh, single action trigger, you know, like I mentioned before. Uh, good double action, certainly suitable enough for self-defense. Um, you know, everything that it needs to do, it will do for you. So, uh, is there a nicer option out there with like these older uh, stub noses? Yeah, I think they are. But I mean, you're going to be paying that extra money. You're going to be paying, um, you know, for it, it, pretty much every case a used gun versus something new. Uh, so you don't know really what, you know, how how long uh, these things have been around, or who's been carrying them for how long, you know, and that kind of thing. So sometimes it's just nice to have just a, a new gun, um, you know. So you'll be you'll be doing all that, and then of course carrying a a piece that's not being made anymore. It's kind of you know vintage style thing. So if that's not really your cup of tea. These modern J frames absolutely will fit the bill, and they will get the job done, which is all you can really ask of them. So. Yeah, uh, I think it was worth the purchase. Uh, I do enjoy this gun, absolutely. And I carry this more than probably any other gun I have, just for the sheer comfort factor. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice piece. So just thought I'd uh, share that with you guys. And uh, later uh, I'll get into some more uh, comparison between these and you know my Model 36 versus uh, 637 and all that stuff and uh, get more into, I guess my snub nose uh, uh, journey, if you will, right? So, all right. And that's uh, all I gotta say about that, and we'll see you next time.